15-31 Civic Center Foundation. This is the floor. Yes, Honorable Mayor and Council. Um, as you're aware, the Civic Center Foundation is in its 13th year of seeking to renovate the old elementary school property into a cultural arts slash civic center space. Um, and I'll read through the brief chronology of recent developments pertaining to the property since May of 2012. On May 1st, 2012, you approved the motion to not accept the proposed purchase contract with private developers uh, for the old elementary school. Furthermore, you direct the city administration to procure a contractor to demolish the entire structure unless an individual or group presents a business plan and financing acceptable to city council, council which, which indicates the extent of the intent to purchase all or part of the property for a demolition agreement that's executed between the city and contractor. At your June 5th, 2012 meeting, city administration informed you that no party had come forward with a business plan and or financing to save the elementary school and or auditorium. At that same meeting, you authorized city administration to enter into a contract with Herald Construction for demolition of the school with the stipulation that the auditorium portion will remain standing the next six months. At the conclusion of the six months, the Civic Center Foundation was to report back to council outlining the progress the group has made in terms of fundraising and development of a realistic business plan for moving forward. On December 4th, 2012, you approved the motion granting a six-month extension regarding demolition of the old elementary school with the requirement that minimum exterior property maintenance improvements be made to the auditorium similar to other properties written up by city staff. As of this date, the Civic Center Foundation has completed some but not all of the required exterior property maintenance improvements. Completed improvements include painting of the doors, handrails, and murals, as well as some of the trim around the lower windows. Repairs have also been done to some of the damaged exterior wall brick. Uh, and the address has also been posted on the front of the property. Items that have not yet been completed today include painting of the front columns and some of the trim around the upper windows, replacement of broken window glazing, repair of various roof leaks, repair of the exterior wall and roof where the previous demolition occurred. As you all read, the demolition of the classroom portion of the building was previously completed by Hill Construction, and they are currently under contract to complete the rest of the demolition for $50,000 should be authorized. Uh, the tentatively budgeted $75,000 for demolition activities at FY14. Uh, Barry Woodruff and all the members of the group are here. Um, the Civic Center Foundation, and uh, Ms. Woodruff has requested permission to update you on the foundation's activities. And I would also like to tell you that the uh, marketing program business plan has been prepared and it's attached to uh, your review, and we will discuss this item in the session. <coughs> Madam Mayor, can I ask a question sure. before we get off of that? Is is the basis for the closed session at the request of the city or of the city? <coughs> city. 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 Are we anticipating action that would really necessitate that in the manager's and attorney's <coughs> opinion? Because there are an awful lot of folks here, I think, with the Civic Center group, and I don't think we're talking about really disposing of publicly held property as, as a potential outcome of this. And I just wonder if there isn't, if it, if it isn't possible to do it in an open session, unless there is something that you know that I'm not aware of that would preclude that. Well, I, I guess one potential option would be to dispose of the property if council wanted to authorize such, and basically the the use of the property going forward. That would be your basis. That would be your basis. And just because we could go into closed session under that reason, I don't think we have to. And I don't think we're likely to make a determination tonight to do that. So I would, would ask that, that council consider hearing the, the, the item in open session. <coughs> Here from Mr. Turf at this time. <coughs> 
Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the council, and others. My name is Mary Woodruff. I reside at 24485 Blue Star Highway, Jarrett. I am president of the Civic Center Foundation, and much of what I was going to tell you, um, Mr. Thrall has already addressed as far as the requirements. So I will skip over to what actually we have uh, done in the past month. The Southampton Center detainees, um, they have worked five days during the month of May. Uh, they weren't able to work uh, previously because of weather and because of their schedule. Uh, they have um, uh, accomplished what um, Mr. Thrower has mentioned, and last Thursday, last Tuesday, they completed their work. And we had them do all that they could do first because we don't have to pay labor. We only have to buy materials and supplies, and we always furnish the lunch. But what has to be done from this point on, we have to use a contractor. We're presently in conversation now with a paint contractor who will go in and do the remaining remainder of the painting which would include scraping and painting the columns and all of the trim across the front of the auditorium. He will also do a lot of, um, um, I guess you might call it, uh, fix-up work where the building was removed, the corner of the auditorium where the building was removed. Uh, the detainees did all that they could do because they're limited by OSHA and how far they could uh, actually go up a ladder. But we found out that there's also roof work to be done, so we're also talking with a roof contractor who will do what needs to be done to repair the roof. Uh, the painting contractor will also have to do some um, building because he needs to seal off from the roof to the temporary wall that the city erected uh, last fall. There's a lot of water that's running in around the temporary wall to the point that it's actually um, causing the tile in the hallway to float when in fact water gets in. Uh, so that's a very important um, matter that we need to attend to uh, after we take care of the exterior improvements. Um, uh, we also have to have a specialist contractor to come down and paint the palatial windows in the auditorium. Uh, they're, uh, they're iron windows, and so it's a process. They have to be sanded and prepared for paint. And it's even possible that the windows may have to be taken out of the building uh, for this to be done. <coughs> but that is where we are with the exterior improvements at this time. And uh, also part of what you all wanted us to do is to prepare a business plan. And uh, we're fortunate to uh, have on board with us Mary Carol Hackett, who is the author of that uh, document, and she will speak to you at this time, unless you have questions for me regarding the exterior. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the council, and others. I'd like to thank you first for your consideration tonight, taking this time with us. And please excuse my voice, but the pollen is carrying me away. Uh, my name is Mary Carol Hackett. I reside at 1814 Lockett Road in Rice, Virginia. I am Associate Professor of English Creative Writing at Longwood University. I was the founder of the Creative Writing Programs at Longwood University, hired in 2003 to build that program, and I served as the director of all of the programs both at the undergraduate and graduate level until November of 2011. I am working with the Civic Center Board now as consultant and part-time director in their efforts toward developing this site as, into a thriving cultural arts and civic center, which we hope will serve all of Emporia and the surrounding area. In response to the council and city manager's request, I am the primary author of the business plan that's been submitted to you, which was created with advice from the Longwood Small Business Development Center Director Sherry McGuire. Since Ms. Woodruff and I first met with Mr. Thrower April 1, I understand that the primary question has concerned what would be meant by a, quote, partnership between the city and the Civic Center Board in developing this project. Such a partnership is vital and necessary for pursuit of grants and other funding to do the types of repair that would allow, to bring, allow us to bring this building back to being a contributing 
asset to the, to the community. So I'd like to clarify this time, as I did for Mr. Thrower, how we're defining that partnership and what we would be asking of you to take into consideration. We're asking for a three-year period, which is a standard startup period for any business um, without threat of demolition, demolition with me working with them and developing programming and pursuing funding through grants and fundraising for both the rehabilitation of the structure and for incrementally increased programming in the building and on the grounds. During this period, we ask only that the city retain the title, continue its current efforts toward the building itself, um, and provide, in the end, no more financial, uh, financial support to the property than it is already currently <laughs> providing. Probably the most important that we would thing we would ask for is would be a letter of commitment to this project um, from the city, in which we would ask that we be allowed to use the appraised value of the property, the current maintenance cost of the site, and the annual monies given to the board for the site as in-kind contributions to be used in pursuit of grant funding. Such a proposal will cost the city no more than its current contributions and realistic pursuit of grant funding to develop programming and fix the building is simply not going to be possible without the city's support. I have a history, a successful history of pursuit of grants and unless I have a commitment from commi letters of commitment in place, um, there's money out there but I'm going to have a real hard time getting it. Um, in return, the board would see to the uh, detailed requested external repairs and upkeep requested by the city and as detailed in the business plan submitted, we would work beginning with small local programming to develop the site into a cultural arts center and contributing, thriving, vital place to celebrate what it means to be in this area. In support of the argument for arts as an economic tool, I also have and would like to provide with you some hard figures um, that I have gotten in conversation with from Chris Pollins Shackleford, who is the executive director of the Chestnut Creek School for the Arts in Galax. I have those attached to my statement, and if I may approach, I'd just like to leave these with you, and I thank you for the time and consideration you've given us tonight. Can I bring these up? question, but um, I guess just a comment. Uh, it's a beautifully written document, and I'm not surprised that you're a creative writing uh, in instructor, but I think this is the least business-like business plan I've, I've ever seen. And, you know, maybe your hands are tied by the lack of in-hand grants or, or initial funds to, to operate with, but I think what I was envisioning when we requested something like this was um, something that had a little bit more meat on the bones as far as a way to, to raise the money, uh, both renovation and operation, uh, a longer term prospect of the kinds of commitments that the group has been able to generate from the work that's been done in the past toward that and something to give us an idea of whether there really was the likelihood that enough would be able to be brought to the table to make this a viable enterprise. Three years is an awful long time when we've been through 13 years already of trying to work toward this. And uh, I don't know if, you know, maybe what we were asking for is not even realistic or possible for y'all to, to be able to do, but this really doesn't give us any more than, than what Mary gave us uh, at the outset of, of this project, which was a nice concept that could be a good thing for the community if it could be pulled off, but we still have no answers to the questions of how to pull it off. And I don't mean that to, say, to, to be as critical as I'm sure it, it sounds, but you know that I think that's what I was 
was hoping to receive and looking for when we had asked for, for a business plan some time back. May I, may I respond? Please. Um, my hands are tied to some extent. Um, I've been in conversation with, I have a successful history of grant funding from the Virginia Foundation for the Humanities. I worked on Tobacco Commission grants. Um, and I have open conversations about both rehab grants and programming grants. Um, however, without the proper documents for me to complete those applications, I can't, I can't give you big numbers that I don't have. Um, and the single most viable document would be a letter of commitment. Um, I completed with Regina Moldavi, who is the grants officer, and Don Butler, who works the Emporia Longwood site here. Last fall, we, co we completed an NEA creative placemaking grant. Um, and it advanced through the first level, and then we were questioned as to where letters of commitment from the partners were. Um, it was much more detailed in terms of finances because at that point we were looking to create a partnership with Longwood. Um, but I can't, I'm, I'm not going to create what I don't have. Um, in terms of revenue generation, um, the arts do not, this is one of the reasons that I brought the information from Chestnut Creek, the arts do not generate revenue in the same way that other industries have. I actually didn't go back to school until I was 38, and I worked in the corporate world prior to that. Um, and we're not going to get manufacturing or retail revenues from an art center. What you will, however, get is spillover economy. Um, when you bring arts and artists to a town, as can be seen in Galax, and as can be seen historically in Asheville, North Carolina, when you bring arts and artists to a town, they spend money. Um, they spend money at restaurants, they spend money at hotels, they spend money at gas stations. Um, that is the type of revenue. It is intangible reputation that pulls people off of 95 into Emporia. It is the idea of that break. I come from a long line of snowbirds, people who travel from Vermont to Florida. They would be looking for just this kind of place. They're looking for a reason to pull off of 95 and come down here. And the arts is one of the things that will take people off the beaten path. The crooked road is absolute proof of that. People will drive way out of their way to travel the crooked road, the Bluegrass Museum in Galax, go to the Floyd Festival. I watch, for the last 10 years that I've been in Farm Bowl, I watch the arts that are built around green front furniture and how the, where the license plates come from. There are license plates from up and down the East Coast but they have a central reason to come there. And this is what I would like to, and I understand the history. Um, they didn't have, I am a successful, I've got 20 years as a successful arts administrator, this is what I do. Um, I told